Our game should release. Oh, there it goes. Here it is. It's happening. Oh, yes. Look at this cinematic. We're opening town. Lighthouse Vector Storm Presents. Oh, this is so cool. Yes. Yes. Cool. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to that one playthrough. And today we're going to start a new series, a new series in a game called MMORPG Tycoon 2. I know it's a mouthful, but the fun of this is we're going to create a video game, specifically an MMO. Uh, we can just ignore my little practice one I put up there. We'll just get rid of that. Okay. Now, this is a game where you create an MMORPG, a massive multiplayer online game super fun super exciting it's a building a game within a game involves some balancing components you get to build landscapes create player classes create npcs create storylines super fun and as long as you're creative i mean there's really no limitations to what you can do with this thing so i'm super pumped and excited i've done some delving into it already and uh, i'm going to start a new game as a series here and i'm super excited to kind of see how long this can go for because to be honest there's really no limitations as far as i've seen as far as you know how how long and how far you want to take the game so here we go we have to start off by naming our game so i am naming my game shatterstone now there are reasons i've got ideas for where i want to take this plot and the lore of this universe that i'm about to create that you're going to join me with and uh yeah so we're going to see where that goes but for the time being we have to pick a logo like a game logo this is like i guess what goes into advertising and whatnot for our game maybe i don't i'm not really sure I'm going to go with the blue Orby thing. Now, I've got reasons for it because of some of the assets I've already seen in the game. So, I'm going to stick with that. We're going to go next. Now, here we get to select what type of game focus our game is going to be. So, you can go combat focus, story, role play, play PvP, casual, social free to play. Um, there's a few benefits to some of them. So, if you do like uh, story, you get uh, flight paths early on as a starting tech, which is kind of cool. Combat gives you badges, which is like little achievements that your players can get. Some, some, certain players within the game like certain types of games better so you'll attract certain types of player types certain player bases so like social gets friends list early on i'm actually going to go role playing i think that's a really cool thing in in a lot of games just to pretend to be the character you want to be more or less so i'm going to do role playing it doesn't give you any extra starting tech but does have all the same starting base components as far as what's available in in assets and whatnot so we're going to go with that then based on our game type role playing we get some starting assets here as far as game stats that are that are built into our structure already so astroturf is basically extra fake stuff that you're going to try and blow out of proportion from your marketing team uh, fluff basically things that look exciting and add to exploration and it, basically it's just a it's just a stat it's not actually changing any of the assets in the game so be aware that you're just changing who and what type of player base is going to be more attracted to your game. So because our game is role-playing, it starts out with a lot of socializing bonus. I'm going to add of our unallocated points, I'm going to add some to Bling and Gibbs. These are better combat, better achievements and loot. I'm actually going to uh, uh, put a few into loot and then, uh, yeah, let's go like that. So we'll go uh, less into advertising, which kind of can slow things down, but we can still do advertising campaigns, which overall help to build the player base early on. All right, and we've got game name, type, we've got our assets, we're ready to create the game. We're not going to do the tutorial, we're not going to start in the sandbox mode. We're going to do this with the cash flow and having to manage everything on all the components of the business as well as the game design. So, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and let our universe get created. Shatterstone. Or whatever cool, you know, person we have do the voiceover for our introduction so to start with the game kind of gives you a uh, a map to use you can actually change these so if you don't like the island assets um, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the game real quick you can actually change the way the islands are oriented so there's gonna be basically sunken um, territories that you can raise up from the ground here technically so if we go into our grid we can raise a region so you can see these are submerged I don't think it costs anything to bring it up. Yeah, so you can just kind of create connections and peninsulas and make it basically oriented however you want. Even if it doesn't look the way, you know, you think it should look for your universe. Personally, I like islands, so I'm going to leave a couple of them like that. I might uh, 
might shrink some of them. So let's, ooh, I like, I like that little bay there. That's cool. I'm going to leave this island as is. I'm going to shrink this a little bit. All right, so I pushed all the other assets up. This is the maximum amount of land I can have down here. I like territories with little lakes in them. I wish there was more. Okay, this is what I think I'm going to go with. I like the idea of a big landmass, but something that's still kind of disconnected in some ways with some island bases. Yeah, so each one of these plots is basically an area of the game that we're going to develop individually. Now, these are actually pretty dang huge. We're going to figure out where we got to make our level one starting location. Personally, I like to find somewhere that's not too big, but also along the coast. Personally, I kind of like this location right here. So we're on the, I guess this would be the east side of the map all the way. There's got this little cool little cove and it's right along the coast. I think it'd be a good spot to, uh, yeah, to do. So we're going to buy this, purchase it and make it our level one starting location. So we're going to go ahead. This is called, this territory is called Stormfire. I don't, can I change the name? Oh yeah, here we go. Stormfire. I'm going to change it to Brightwood. I like the sound of Brightwood. It's cheery. It's good for, you know, early level one. Get, no, not, not 2Ds. There we go. Just, just that, that. That's fine. Thank you. Then we can go ahead and make sure. Let's see. We got uh, Chasm. What is Chasm? That's cool. What happens if I change away from Chasm? Oh, it gets rid of our cool cove. Well, let's, let's undo that, please. There we go. Get to Chasm. And then the trees disappear. Cool. I didn't know that was a thing. I like forest. Let's go... Yeah, we'll just go regular forest. Forest, forest, field. Can I make everything more foresty? Forest, forest, thank you. What does that do? How many trees does that... Oh my gosh, it produces all of the trees. Okay, let's make the regular thing field. What does that do? Oh, okay, that just, that just leaves a couple trees. So let's... What happens if they're mountains? Oh. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay, so I've reapplied the forest. Now, just because there's trees in these specific locations here, uh, doesn't mean we can't move them, doesn't mean that we can't add more of them, actually, too. So, let's go ahead and get started with some of the basics here. You can actively control, like, what the environment looks like, too. So, really quick, I'm going to make the tint um, not pink. That way, we'll make the sky definitely more of a blue. So at the apex, we'll make it dark. And then in the middle, let's go kind of sky blue, light blue. And then we'll just make the horizon pretty, pretty white colored. There we go. Now we've got a pretty beautiful area that everybody who's just starting out at level one is going to enjoy so much. All right, I'm gonna take advantage of this little cove here too, and I'm gonna make it. Uh, oh, I'm gonna make it uh, as as homey little small, you know, trader town as possible. So we gotta start off in our buildings. We're gonna grab an inn, and there is a yeah, there's a coastal inn it's right there. Perfect. Look at that. And we'll go ahead and add a tavern. Now, the inns are where people will, like, save the game. Um, the taverns. We'll get it. We got a coastal tavern we can do. Coastal tavern is where they'll do all their socializing kind of in-game. And you'll notice they're not activated yet. We've got a coastal blacksmith, too. We'll go ahead and add this guy. And let's make the blacksmith kind of over in the back of town here. There we go. Got a coastal shop. This looks like it's set up kind of temporarily almost, so we can add some theming to this at some point. Let's go ahead and add that there. Oh, potion shop. Yeah, we need to do a potion shop. Where is the coastal potion? There it is, coastal potion shop. That can maybe go up by the blacksmith. Yeah, let's put it about there. Go ahead and add paths to everything. Good old, good old paths. We'll just put one path. Actually, let's kind of go like this and then 
I want this to kind of arc up and back down. There we go. Yes, just like... Oh, building is in the way. And then we'll connect that. And then let's have this go that way. Complete that. And we'll have another one that comes off. To the end. Create a big loop here in town. Okay, so we got the start of our little town here. Now we need to make a respawn point. So when our players inevitably die, um, they can come back to life somewhere. So we're going to grab respawn points. Let's just do civilized respawn point. And placing that guy rid of our trees. Well, poopers. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just place some trees back into this region here. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then we'll go into some scenery. I want to add some theming here, like there's a reason why there's a strange graveyard. Cool rocks with some runes. Kind of get a Stonehenge-y vibe going here. Cool, sort of like some kind of ritual that brings people back from the dead. That's the theme we're going for. Okay, then the other thing we gotta do is add a network here. So we gotta do an uplink. This is what's gonna allow us to basically uh, get our game up and running. So we'll put an uplink node kind of right here where we want some, I think where we want the fastest connection or something. Yeah, so these cost money every game day to operate. So we don't wanna have too many of them. Uh, bandwidth, zero of 50 being utilized. Uh, until we start to get stuff connected and people playing, we'll kind of see what that threshold is. Then we want to create some cables. And this is basically what's going to start activating portions of our game. So everything that's in it, I think of this is like piping in like a city builder almost. Like you got to have the network um, interconnected. Otherwise the things that are in your universe won't, you know, work or be playable. So... We're going to just kind of create some connection points so nothing gets left out in our starting location here. There we, oop. And then we'll end it there. Perfect. Now if we press play, we'll get a connection and things will start to activate and actually populate into the world as buildings so that when we look at them, they don't look like weird glowy things like that. They'll activate, boom, there we go. We've got the start of our town, perfect. And then you'll see a little um, a little mouse, like a cursor that darts around this guy. That is actually our employee. So we go into GM management, uh, game master management, uh, we can see we have one game master. That's our little cursor that's darting around. It's basically one of our game devs. He's the guy that's going through, or gal, that's going through and just making sure our game is working. They also do bug fixes that have to happen as players start populating the world. Right now, we only need the one. He's not going to be overwhelmed because we don't have anything going on yet. Okay, we start off with a lot of money, so I'm going to go ahead and just start making some cool-looking scenery. I want our little cove town here to kind of have a little coastal theme. I love the palm trees kind of sticking out over the ledge here. Oh yeah, that's cool. That's cool right there. Now we're talking. We'll add some smaller plants. Get some brush and stuff in here. Every time we add a component we actually are adding to our actual game status. So basically, we're not in version 1.0 yet because we haven't gone to launch. Um, but every time we add things to populate our world, we add more to the actual status uh, of our game. There's a little sign we can add to direct our players on where they're going at a crossroads. And then there's actually some cool 
walls and fences we can add. So if we want to add like a, uh, you know, like an actual big city wall, we could. But I like kind of these small introductory fences to begin. With. No, I don't want to connect that. What the heck? Okay, well that's upsetting. Now we'll just go like that. That looks kind of neat. But now that I'm thinking of it, I know there is a building structures. No, it's in here we go. Landmarks. And then there's a lighthouse. Yes, we can add a lighthouse. We'll put this, I think, is only right to have out on this little peninsula. There we go. We can we can add some quests that attach to that later on to send players over there to take a look at it. And there's also some other landmarks in here. You go Clock Tower, Wizard Spire. There's a couple of these I want to put in because they kind of add little locations that players will want to go to. Uh, as well as, you know, we might want to add components of it to certain quests. So on the back of this forest, right, right about here, I'm going to add a Wizard Tower. Okay, and then I want to add one of these... What is it called? An elegant spire. Well, an elegant spire. And I'm going to put this kind of... I don't know. I want it to be not up on the hill, but... but like right there. Yeah. There we go. All right. I'm going to add a path to... Kind of going around some of this stuff. Now, paths are not required, but basically uh, players will follow paths more than anything else if there's an option. So if there's an option to go a path versus just open ground, they'll take the path because the paths are typically safer. Um, you know, you could, you could, I guess, choose to make a path dangerous if you wanted to put uh, enemies and stuff on it. But we're going to make sure our, our players can use this to access the uh, lighthouse down here if they need to. A little water thing here, like a well. I'm going to add this next to our blacksmith. I think that's a cool little thematic thing to have. And then by our shop, I'm going to add more little structures here. There we go. Oh, the tree's getting in my way. There's also some modular buildings, which I think are pretty cool to add, like towers of certain sorts. That tower looks kind of build one of these and then we can actually go a little more modular with it let's get rid of basically everything except the tower and then I think if we yeah then we go here we go move we can kind of put this wherever we want so I'm gonna put this as like a little watch tower at the edge of that and then maybe from there we can add that wall we wanted originally And then that way it feels like there's some safety, you know, along this edge of town by this forest. We're going to add like this kind of barny looking building. And we're going to build a like actual guard watch tower. There we go. And then what we're going to do is actually... Add our first NPC. I want to create a, uh, let's see, we got warrior, scout, paladin. No, we're gonna we're gonna change some of these. Uh, I don't want those. Go design. Uh, let's see, these are our player classes. We're gonna change those. NPCs, snarf and sage. No, we don't want snarf. Let's edit his appearance. Let's go, gar that kind of head. I don't know what's going on with his hat there. We're going to add a helmet. Let's add... Oh, that is way too small. Oh, that's probably a better head there. Let's do that one. Let's go, go down again. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking. That's got the right kind of metrics. What kind of armor is this guy going to have? I don't know what that is. More of that. Uh, oh, that's definitely not right. What looks like a guard outfit? I think that might do. Looks very guardy like that. No tail. We don't want a tail. Oh, I can make the arms different. That's scary. 
No, I think his torso is too big. Oh, that shrinks his whole body. Okay. Wait, can I change? Oh, I can change the color. Well, that's that's his that's his skin. Let's just leave that where it was. Oh no, that's that's too vibrant. Maybe a little lighter. There we go. What is this? Uh, this blue. This is his arm. Yeah, there we go. Let's make it more of a gray steel. That'll do. Gloves. Gloves should be dark. There we go. We'll make the gloves dark. Oh, those are like boots. I like those. Let's do the boot one. Or maybe these are like boots. No, that's definitely boots. These are boots. That's what we want right there. That's a guard if I ever saw one. Okay, we're going to apply that. I'm not going to worry about their abilities. Uh, well, he's not going to be called Snarf. We're just going to call this Town Guard. Ooh, maybe we need to scale him up bigger. Still looks tiny compared to this Sage. Okay, this is another... Well, this is just an NPC. Okay, yeah, so it's applying them down here. So I can see my Town Guard plus all the other ones. What if I go to player classes? Are there like pre-built ones I can choose from? Not really. I need like robes. Where are robes? Oh, that that's that looks like robes. Is that robes? Yeah, that's that's the one. Yeah, so there's the robes, right? Oh, I don't know what that is. Yeah, these are the robes. Give the robes kind of a dark red color. Let's change this head before we freak everything out here. Let's get no helmet. Oh, actually, no, we need a wizard hat. There we go. Scale up the wizard hat, make it bigger. Lower it down on top of his head. There we go. Arms. Yes, that, that's the kind of arm we want. Got a sleeve. Got some, it's got some buttons on the side. Do we want buttons on the side? What else we got? Ooh, this one's got like a glove and some like, you know, ripply things. Ooh, that one's got like a shoulder cap. Got gloves. I like the ripply ones, I think. Let's do the ripply ones. Where, where are the ripply ones on this side? Let's make the sides look identical, Kyle. Seriously, WTF. Um, oh wait, here we go. Wait, that one's... I am thoroughly confused. Oh, it's like a shield. Okay, so those are... Mm, maybe that's not going to work. Okay, we're just going to do this one with the buttons. There we go. That's fine. Okay, there's our wizard. We're going to go ahead and create... Basic abilities, I think strike, I like to have strike on all the entry level uh, abilities. So uh, let's go, yeah, one second cooldown's fine. Instant cast, melee range, one damage, no mana, it's just a physical attack. Super simple, nice and easy. Create a flavor text, strike your enemy with your weapon. And then when we hit apply, it'll change that up here in the flavor text. Strike your enemy with your weapon, dealing one damage effect. We're just going to go attack, physical. Let's go just straight line. And we'll make the color like kind of dark red. There we go. Perfect. And then the second ability, let's go ahead and make it more wizardy sounding. So, oh, no, we don't want to pick the icon yet. Let's go. We're going to call this uh, spark. Oh, not, with, not with extra capitals. There we go. Spark. The flavor is fire a small energetic projectile. And we'll go ahead and apply. Effect. I'm going to make it a cast. And it's going to be make it electric looking. There we go. And let's add, give it like an orange color. Oh yeah, now we're talking. Should it be straight or ballistic? Let's do ballistic. I like that look. And mechanics. Uh, no, we're not going to do... Rage, we want mana on this guy. Let's go yeah, one mana, three damage, go two second cooldown for the time being. 0.5 second cast. So now our DPS is 1.2 on that ability. And then if we actually look at the general, we get optimal DPS 1.3 for this character. I might I might actually buff some of those. That's for a wizard that's not super high, I feel like. Let's go with three. Nah, let's see. Two seconds still, and we will increase this to four damage. And now we're at 1.5 DPS. Okay, we'll start with there. Uh, base health, I want this guy to be weak. No rage. Mana, we'll give him a ton. Base speed five, that's perfect. And we're not going to call you the warrior. You are going to be a wizard. All right, so there's our first player class that players can actually play as. Okay, I like paladin. Let's keep paladin. 
base health, mana, rage. I don't know. Paladins don't use rage. They use mana. Let's go 10 mana. He's going to have a strike ability too. And let's just find an icon that's just general swordy looking. Oh, here we go. Here's a hand with a sword. Perfect. Instant cast effects. Let's go just straight line physical. Make it kind of dark red like the other one. Apply. Perfect. Okay, so now we have Divine Hammer. Ooh, I like the sound of that. That's cool. Stare intensely at the target. That's that's not what happens. We're going to summon the hammer of Ooh, we need like a like a god's name. We're gonna we're gonna start adding some lore here without even realizing it. Uh summon the hammer of your grass. Summon the hammer of your grass to smash an enemy. Perfect. Dealing three damage. Mechanics. Uh, no longer rage. We don't want rage. We're going to use mana on this. It's going to take... Let's say it takes two mana. I think that's acceptable. We're going to go... Ooh. Mm. Let's go Let's go three second cooldown, but we're going to make this... Yeah, three damage, three second cooldown. That's one DPS. Let's go 0.5 cast, and then we'll do two second cooldown. How about that? 1.2 DPS. Okay, so his optimized is 1.4. I'm actually going to buff the wizard, because the bu wizard has less health. Actually, now that I think about it. Yeah, paladins should be lower DPS. So, because they're so tanky. Let's go 3 second cooldown. We nerfed him down to 1.4. The wizard should go... We need to change this icon, too. Need some fiery. Where are the fire icons? Oh, here we go. This looks like a good one for Spark. Okay, so he does four damage. I think that's actually a lot, because early on, our enemies are not going to be super tough. And the wizard is going to be able to one-shot some things if we make him too strong. So actually, let's nerf him and make this three mana. There we go. 1.6 DPS. That's good. And then our paladin's 1.4. I'm, I'm going to nerf him further. Needs more nerfing. 3 mana, and we're going to go 4 second cooldown. And now he's optimized 1.3. Nope, still too high, still too high. The wizard needs to be stronger. 5 second cooldown. Well, one, oh, it's still 1.3. Okay, never mind, whatever. And then a scout. I don't like, I don't like scout. We're going to make this just uh, a, uh, no, let's see, a knight or fighter, or war, not warrior. We're going to go just simple fighter. Base health, we're going to make it 12. He's going to use Rage. So let's also make sure our model is better here. Okay, I'm not sure if this is armor. It kind of looks like armor. We're going to go with that. We need to give him some pants of some sort. Scale up the body. And shrink the head. Actually change this. What do we, what, what do we got in here? Ooh, that's very dwarfy looking. Well, these are interesting. Kind of like that, maybe. Ooh, that's an eye patch. That's cool. I don't like that one. I'm going to go with this one. Although this torso is now bothering me. But well, that's interesting. All right, there we go. I think we found it. He's got some armor. He's got a thing. He's got a little shield on one side, a helmet. He looks fantastic. Yeah, there's our three classes. Wizard, Fighter, Paladin. I love it. Okay, we still need to make sure we clean up his abilities. I think you should have a unique first ability rather than just strike. It's going to be like, I don't know, is heavy strike too generalized? Thrust. We're going to use thrust or sword thrust. There we go. Sword thrust. It's going to be melee range, instant cast, two, no, one second cooldown, one DPS. Actually, we're going to, going to make that a little bit better. It's going to be 1.5 DPS. Oh, stab the target. Yes, stab the target is exactly what we want. And then effect, we're going to go straight line. We're going to make it dark red again. Attack, physical, perfect. Apply. We need to change this picture. Where's a stabby picture? We need a stabby picture. This one's kind of a stabby, swordy, thrusty type picture. Apply. And then secondary ability. I think I like the fact that he's got a shield. So we're going to do a shield bash ability. There we go. And this is going to be an attack... What does Earth look like? Oh, that's 
That's weird looking. Fire, electric, dark, light. What is light? Interesting. What is... Okay, let's make it straight. What about dark? That's... That's weird. Water? Well, that's bubbly. Let's just go... F nah, not, not physical. No, I don't like any of these. We're just gonna go light, and then I'm gonna make it, like... I don't know, black? That seems counterproductive to go black and make it light. What happens if it's light and dark? Oh, that is mystical and evil looking. We don't want that. Okay, physical. Physical, and what if it's just like white colored? That's good. Okay, shield bash. Now the mechanic. Here's where we're going to get crazy. We're going to make this take a lot of rage. It's going to be like, like 5 rage. Not 50, just 5. 5.0. 5. 5. Damage is going to be like 1. But... Effect on the target. We are going to stun the target. Not for eight seconds. Holy crap, that is way too long. We're gonna have like really bad game creep. 1.5. No no no. We'll do it. We'll do a two-second stun. We'll see how that lasts. Uh it might be too much. Now we're gonna make a three-second cooldown on this. So the DPS is not the target, it's the stun. You know, lock the person down. Apply. Oh, I need to change the picture too. Where's the shield pictures? Shieldy pictures. Here's kind of a shieldy picture. That might work. Maybe it's a, that might be a little too paladin-y, but well, we'll keep it for now. I don't think there's anything else that involves a shield moving, maybe? Moving shield picture? Who knows? Okay, that's that's fine. We'll just we'll just use that for now. Okay, so he's got 1.5 optimized DPS, which makes him does that make him the strongest right now? Starting DPS? Like a wizard. No, the wizard is highest. That's what we wanted. That's that's correct. Fighter, yeah, fighter's gonna be middle field. So good DPS, good base uh, defenses versus the paladin who's gonna be super high defense, lower DPS. I'm gonna take a minute to adjust this guy's head. It's way too big. There we go. That's more like it. Apply. All right, that only took forever, but we've got our player classes done now. I think I'm gonna keep the Sage NPC. Well, actually, I have the Wizard. I do like, hold on. Did I make his beard white colored too? Oh yeah, now we're talking. I gotta raise his hat up a little bit though. That's better. I'm gonna make NPC, I'm gonna make this a different NPC. Ooh, I should make like a Ranger class guard. That's what I should do. What do we got for rangery looking things? Ooh, that's kind of cool looking. Let's go like that. We'll change the head. I like kind of the... I mean, that's like very elvish looking, obviously. Oh yeah, ranger. Ranger for sure. All right, so without uh, wasting too much time, I created a town guard and a ranger class for our regular NPCs. And then monsters, oh gosh, I'm probably, no, we'll keep these. I think kobolds, spiders, those are good starting ones. Player classes, we got those organized. So everything is ready to go now. Without further ado, let's go ahead and put our first quest giver down. Let's go ahead and create the fighter. He looks very tiny. Is everyone the same height? Okay, just, just checking, just checking the ranger. Okay, yeah, so we'll give that quest giver there. Go ahead and put some guards. Now guards we can do, we can do a regular, the regular town guard. These are not quest givers. They're still NPCs, but they're not quest givers. And let's put a, a ranger over here too by the tower. They're gonna just protect this area. Let's also make sure that the, uh, the respawn point here, when players die, they can come out to an area that's uh, well protected. Let's go ahead and put a ranger guard by this tower, as well as a town guard. And then we'll scatter some town guards throughout this whole area just to ensure that there's some safety no matter where players end up. I'll put a few of them around here. Okay, we'll go back to our quest giver. I think I can actually name all these guys. Lady Lucian is Squire more... Yeah, these are, these are fine. I'm not going to be... Lieutenant. I don't know if you're a lieutenant. That might be pushing it a little bit. Squire, lady, yeah, I like I like the uh, mix of uh, genders here. Sir, but you're not a knight. Maybe you are. Maybe you are a knight if you're sir. 
Sort of Lover, Squire. Yeah, this is kind of a good mix, I think. I'm not too worried about that. However, this guy, you are not. You are not a lieutenant. Sorry. Sorry, buddy. Maybe maybe you can be a sergeant, but that's about it. I don't, for all I know, a lieutenant's uh, lower rank than a sergeant. I just give him a promotion. We're going to make this uh, captain. Captain Unte? No, not Unte. Captain... Uh, Captain Hector. There we go. Captain Hector. That's a good name. And Quest. Uh, no, we're not going to have people locate beer. Now, what we need to do is create up a monster zone for people to have their first quest to go, you know, slay some monsters. So the spooky, spooky forest. Yes. Yeah, spooky. Fo Ooh, there's a dead tree over here. I've got an idea already. We're going to go NPCs into monster zone. We're going to create a spider area. And they are around the dead tree because for some reason the dead tree is uh, creating a spidery zone. That's that's the lore and we're sticking to it. All right. And then I can actually create an epic monster. Let's create an epic monster. I can only do a level one epic. That's fine. We'll just put an epic spider right here by the dead tree. Perfect. Take a look at our epic spider. So let's see, regular spiders have 10 health. What is their DPS? Their monsters, spider, ooh, 2.0 DPS. This might actually kill a lot of our level one players because it has more health and more DPS than the wizard, which is problematic. Let's go ahead and bring these down to like eight and let's look at their DPS, so bite. A weird image for bite when there's literally like teethy ones. I know there's I know there's a teeth icon. There it is. Bite. Perfect. Stare intensely at the target. No, no, just literally bite the target. That's that's all you have to do. The traje, not the tar the traje, the target. There we go. Damage one. Okay, so one DPS is fine. Let's make cooldown two seconds, give it a little nerf, and then spit. Spit does two damage, but we'll make it a four second cooldown and a 0.5 second cast. There we go. So that makes the spiders 1.0 DPS. That is a good level one thing to fight. Okay, then we can also change in by clicking on the spider zone. Come on. There we go. Service, spider. We're going to make this light population so there's not too many of them. Otherwise, players will get ambushed by multiple spiders at once that should be good 42 spiders alive be danger 10 very high really maybe we should just go minimal is that does that look it just doesn't look like there's enough spiders for everyone to to kill okay we're gonna go we're just gonna make it light now did that nerf the big spider yes so the big spider is essentially twice as strong as the regular spiders now if players find this too easy and no one's ever dying then we can we can buff the spiders later okay so now we can grab our first quest giver captain hector his quest is going to we're going to edit and go and select the location to be the spider zone and you have to kill sure you have to kill eight monsters that's fine uh, we're not going to no not 10 gold we're going to make this like two gold we don't want to break the economy He's going to ask players like, hey, you should go help us destroy these spiders at the edge of town. Perfect. And then uh, he should have a second quest that's going to send people. No, not to the potion shop. He's going to send people to the blacksmith. There we go. And your goal is going to be to buy a weapon or, or, or upgrade, upgrade your weapon perfect um we're not going to give uh gold for this that's just going to be a suggestion so there we go that's an easy quest to fulfill we're gonna have to do some balancing too real quick of the experience points our players get so we'll want to evaluate that in a second so now we have two quests assigned from this guy captain hector and he is going to send people to go take out spiders. He's going to send people to upgrade their weapons. So they'll start to get some of the basic components of the game. First combat experience, 
There's upgrading of weapons. And then the other thing we'll add in here in NPCs, we'll go ahead and place some trainers. So the trainers are gonna be identical to our classes, our player classes. So we'll put a paladin trainer, we'll put a fighting trainer, uh, fighter trainer next to the blacksmith. And then we'll go ahead and add a wizard trainer over by the potion shop would be a good spot for him. Okay, now I don't think that's gonna be the first NPC our characters ever see. That, I actually want to be more of a wizard because I have a plan for some of the introductory lore that's going to be occurring here. So we'll find uh, this shady spot over here seems like a good spot. We're going to place our wizard here. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade our game. Now this is going to give us a couple of options here. Obviously we can branch off into other things later on. But to start with, we're going to have our starting point, which is where players first enter the game at. Uh, so when they first log in, this is the, the first thing they'll they'll come out of. So we're going to go ahead and make sure the game is paused for one. No, I didn't want to delay. I want to actually go ahead and select starting point. We're going to hit release, but it's not going to do the actual release montage of our game yet, which is good. So that's why we want to keep it paused. Then if we go into buildings, we now have starting points. And hmm, I'm going to do the overgrown starting point because it fits kind of with some of the other components um, that I'm going to throw into it. I don't want it to look too elegant, or do I? Change my mind. We're going to use we're going to use the elegant starting point. So we'll go ahead and shift this. Now it hasn't been actually built yet, but if you place the item and then you want to move it somewhere else, you can actually place it near other items, other other scenery without them getting deleted, which is a good little trick. So we're going to go ahead, place it there near our wizard. Now, the reason I'm going to have him there is there's going to be some lore connection here. He's investigating this location because there are random uh, adventurers spawning out of it. They're being summoned to this realm, and he's trying to figure out why. So the, the adventurers that are summoned are you, the player, you're going to come out, you're going to speak to this guy, and he's going to be like, whoa, where did you come from? We should investigate the origins of this uh, interaction, this this thing that's occurring. All right, and we're going to go ahead and add some scenery. Oh, I like these big rune-looking rocks. That's fine. Let's see. Let's get one that's kind of that. It. another one like that and then the really cool thing you can actually do with these is you can actually stack things which is pretty cool if you ask me um, I don't know if we're going to do it let's place, place one back here we kind of get a, an interesting circle going and then we're going to have this one facing the player as they enter the world. Yeah, there we go. Now I'm going to move our little guy here. Wait, can I move him? All right, no, we're just going to delete him and we'll put a new one down. PCs, quest givers, get a little wizard guy. We're going to place him right there. Okay. Now his first quest is the first thing people are going to do when they come out. Uh, we're not going to fight the spiders. That's not what we're going to do. Uh, we're not going to search for his shoes either at the shop. That's not a thing. We don't want people to do that. The first thing people are going to do is he's going to be like, all right, well, we got to investigate where you people came from. So his first theory is, I want to edit, yes. And his first theory is, you know, did you, did you come from the graveyard? Are you raised dead? So he's going to have people investigate there going to have players go to the graveyard and they're going to rule out the dead so we're going to rule out that reincarnation was the reason they've been summoned here reward zero gold uh, we'll deal with xp in a little bit they're going to go check out the respawn point and rule out that that's not where they came from which is not it's not where they came from from our lore perspective we're going to have reasons later on i think that they were summoned to this world but uh, all of our adventurers are going to do that first then 
then he's going to suggest, okay, well, since you're new here, why don't you go to the inn? So people will then, as new, new players, are going to learn basically how inns work. And this is not locate shoes. This is just going to be settle, oops, settle in to Brightwood. Not Bright's wood, Brightwood. There we go. Settle into Brightwood, and there's no gold value attached to that. Good. All right, so he's basically giving the introductory quests. And this guy, Advisor Maxonite. You know, I kind of like that. That's kind of cool. It sounds like he's got some kind of affiliation with uh, a royal royalty in the area of this region. Something. I don't know. He's the advisor to them. And that's maybe why he's investigating. Uh, the, what I do want to do is I'm going to copy his name. And then I'm going to come over to that tower we made, which apparently is not getting activated. Maybe we should look at our grid real quick. No, the network. Oh, it's just outside. That's a bummer. So that's what happens when you don't have the network connected to certain pieces. So we're going to have to just extend this. Let's see. Let's bring it out to here. Good. Okay, so that should include that now. All right, we are going to select this. I'm going to name it Maxonides Spire. There we go. Or No, not Spire. We're just going to call it his tower. Good. Perfect. Ooh, has this thing not been activated to Elegant Spire? Well, that should be fine. Yeah, because neither has the lighthouse, I guess. Lighthouse has not been activated, so we will wait on that. Okay, so Maxonite has his tower named. He's got his quest introducing players to the world. They're going to get introduced to... Now everything's not activated. Now I'm confused. Do we have enough, like, space for activation? Oh yeah, our bandwidth is maxed out, I guess. Okay. Do I need to create another uplink? Is that... Is that a thing? Okay, we're gonna see if that solves the problem eventually. Hopefully that will fix things. We're gonna have to solve this before we start our game. Okay, so he's gonna send people to the respawn point, enjoy the scenery, and return to him. Basically, they're doing an investigation to make sure that, uh, you know, they're not uh, raising people from the dead, and that's why they're coming out of this weird portal. Uh, then he's gonna send people to set their home to the inn, we can add another quest. Um, we're gonna have people go and talk to our friend here, go to Captain Hector, and that's what's gonna link them to his quest chain. And it's gonna be help the empire. We're just gonna call it help the empire. We're, I'm, I'm, I'm officially making these guards and everything part of some empire. And once again, we're not gonna have a gold reward because our wizard is not just paying people to randomly go around. Perfect. And then the last thing we'll have him do, edit this last one, he's going to send people to the potion shop too, because that just seems like a thing that a wizard would do. He's going to say, go here, learn about potions, buying things, blah, blah, blah. And it's going to be a, a shop for potions. Gonna get rid of the gold value. Perfect. Yeah, restock your potions. Perfect. Okay, and then... We also want West here from Captain Hector. He's also going to tell people to go to the shop here. And it's going to be just, you know, we'll call it unload your dort. Unload your loot. The people will sell some stuff at the shop. Yeah, sell, sell your loot there. Perfect. And then people will start to get the basics of the game. This kind of forces them into making sure they upgrade their gear, buy some potions, go to the shop, sell stuff, so that our players don't uh, just, you know, wander around with crappy weapons and whatnot. Okay, we got a couple quest lines. Now what I want to do is make sure we do some uh, in-game balancing real quick. I know it's in design. And then we're going to go XP and leveling. Now we can assign an XP that each enemy provides. So every enemy, level one, is, or not level one, but every enemy provides experience plus experience based on their level. So the base experience I like to set to 10, I'm gonna set the per level to 15. So basically higher level uh, 
enemies are going to produce greater experience. So we'll apply this. And what this is going to do is this is going to set the kind of the base experience required to level up. Then we can set the number of kills per level. This is gonna, uh, this is this is the experience that the monster provides. This will be the ex uh, experience or multiplier or how much experience is required for the players to hit the next level. I like to set this high. I don't like to see um, people, you know, uh, grinding out for levels by just killing enemies. So if you wanna just kill enemies, it's gonna take you a while. I want up there to be an emphasis on basically uh, completing quests, going through the storyline, actually playing the game rather than just beating on things in the middle of the forest. Okay, so once we have that set, so right now, you can see here base experience 10, 15 per level. So at level one, monsters provide 25 experience. You need 200 kills, so it's 5,000 experience needed to level up. But then we can give you quest rewards. And I like to think that 10 quests to, uh, to level up from one to two is a good baseline, which means that every uh, quest is gonna provide 500 experience because there's 5,000 needed. Now then what we can do is we can set what the quest requirement is at higher levels. And I wanna set this high so that there's more of a rewarding scaling. So by the time we get to high levels, you actually need to complete a ton of quests. Now 200 is probably a bit much. We can modify these down. So between the levels of 19 and 20, you're required to complete 100 uh, quests, essentially. We can modify the value of quest experience as we saw in the quest designs for each one of our quest givers. So I'm not too worried about these values, but I like to set a base precedent for each one of my quests. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that's applied. Now, if we go over to these initial quests, we're gonna see that there is um, experience uh, needed in terms of each one of these. Now, if we made the default rewards, or sorry, if we change the default re uh, rewards here, which we did on some of these, it's going to change. If I set it to default, it's going to go 500 experience, 10 gold. Now, I'm going to set the upgraded weapons to zero gold again. I'm going to set this to like 50 XP because going and upgrading your weapon should be a common thing to just kind of learn. Same goes for this. We're going to set this just a nice 50. Um, thinning the spiders, you got two gold. Um, let's, we're going to make this a little higher um, because I'll show you the economy wise in a second. Unload your loot. We're going to make this just 50. And this is zero. Now, if we check what our blacksmith services are, it costs in game gold. 10 to basically buy from this location. This is a level one blacksmith, so it's gonna provide level one characters with good stuff. We're gonna set this to four gold, okay? Now the reason for that being, and I'm gonna sync the prices, is that we want there to be a reward that if we complete this quest, and then the next quest we go to upgrade our weapons, we're gonna have the four gold required to upgrade our weapons. So we've essentially created a, uh, a game loop that the players can do to help improve what they're actually doing and capable of. Okay, and I do want to make sure that we have the base experience on this. This should actually be providing uh, 500. So if we kind of come back to this, if we, if we exit out um, and then go back to our quest giver's quest, this will tell us the total experience that this quest giver gives for all of their quests. So right now it's 600 experience out of the 5,000 required for level two, okay? So he gives about a little more than 10% of what's required to level up. Now our initial quest, I want there to be a little more reward so our players actually start getting some more out of it. So rule out the dead, this is your first experience. Let's go ahead and bring this up to 500. Settle into Brightwood, let's go ahead and make that 100. Help the Empire. This is just sending people kind of on their way. This is going to be one of those base 50 ones. And sell your potions. Let's go ahead and make that 100. We're sending them into something that's going to help out uh, their, their player loop, game loop in the long run. Now if we get out of here, click back on to our friend Mr. Maxini, Max, Max, Maxinetti. Maxinetti is his name. That's what his name is. We now see 750 out of 5,000. So he's giving more than 10% of what's required to level up. Okay. 
Now there's also experience obviously gained from killing monsters. So as they kill some of these spiders, there's experience there that will kind of have to factor into the overall system here in the long run as well. Now with this little established uh, outpost, I'm gonna put some tents here. I'm gonna apply some tents. And these are going to be kind of like uh, what this Empire unit has established as their ground base in the area to uh, basically they're trying to figure out what's going on with uh, this thing as well, this spawn point, why it's bringing random people into this universe. And also they're just going to help deal with the uh, spider menace. Go into the furniture here and we're going to get detailed. We're going to go real, real ham here and apply a little table that our uh, commander's going to use in his tent here. Maybe he's got... Uh, no, that's kind of alchemy. Yeah, he's got a little, little study table here, too, that he's using while he's out on the front. We want a bookshelf? Not that. We don't need a bookshelf. We can add... This is like a little bunk, so we'll add... down so it looks more like an actual bunk. There we go. Gonna place an NPC. We'll grab another quest giver and this is going to be uh, I think uh, he's going to be a little higher rank so we'll get the paladin guy. There we go. That yeah, looks a little more official. We'll grab some higher ranking guards around here. So this will help just really ensure that this is a safe area. And then we get to add a couple more quests. Now these are going to be full reward quests. So he has a higher ranking um, kind of hunt quest, we're going to say. He's going to send players way over here, but their goal is going to be to take out the big guy. We're going to, we're going to keep the base rewards, 500 experience, 10 gold. This is a big reward. And... Yeah, so that's... We'll rename that guy in a second. We're going to name our spider. We're going to name our level 1 elite spider Crosthen. Crosthen the spider. And he's going to automatically have double the base stats of a regular spider. So a regular spider is uh, 8.3 health. And uh, he's going to be 16.6. .6. So he's already double the size and double the health double the damage so people won't be able to do it on their own so hopefully they'll form some groups to go after cross thin the spider okay so we'll go back to our quest giver here and we're going to name this guy this is going to be commander ritus commander stritus that sounds like a good name for our uh, paladin commander here of the uh, forces around uh, brightwood all right and then he's got a second quest we're going to reassign He's going to tell people to go investigate the lighthouse. And investigate lighthouse, not discover the princess. It's a uh, search for clues. Yes, because uh, the lighthouse attendant has gone missing. That's what we're going to say. That's what's happened. The lighthouse attendant has gone missing. We want you to search for clues. And I'm going to make the default uh, not the case here. Let's go two gold. No, not 20. Two gold. That's enough for that quest to, to go over there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few enemies over here. We're going to go with some skeletons. Yes, skeletons are going to be taking over this peninsula. Actually, I take that back. I'm not doing skeletons. We're going to do kobolds. We'll make it kobolds. I'll go ahead and apply that. Change it to little, little kobold guys. There we go. Let's go kind of light. There there doesn't need to be too many of them. And then, uh, yeah, maybe we'll expand it a little bit. There we go. That's a pretty good, uh, pretty good enemy location. And then really quick, I just want to check the balancing on our kobolds. They have one ability, candle, instant cast, one second cooldown, 1.5 damage. Let's change the image. More, more candle-y, I guess. Okay, that's fine. Their DPS is 1.5, 5 health. These are going to be super easy enemies. Uh, maybe we should actually... Yeah, let's actually increase the density 
but people have to fight multiple kobolds at once. That would be cool. We're gonna add some scenery. We'll grab some palm trees. There we go. Excellent. Put some kind of plant life around the beach here. Maybe some bushes around the base of our lighthouse. And some rocks. We need some rocks. That's what we need. The kobolds have taken over the lighthouse area. That's what we're going with. We can put in some modular buildings too. Let's uh, let's make like little little towers the kobolds have built that they're kind of living in. Let's see. No, we don't want to delete. Oh man, our tree got deleted. Okay, let's do this, and then we're gonna move these around. Place them right up next to the tree. There we go. Do the same over here. Yeah, they're kind of living, living around the trees. There we go. Put in one more, and then we'll add a tree back. There we go. Nice, there we go. The, the, the kobolds have taken over, they've created their own community, and uh, that's why the the lighthouse man has been missing. So Commander, what's his name? Commander Stritus has asked us to uh, check that out. And then um, I think he'll have another quest and we'll say he wants you to take out some of the kobolds. So we're gonna go to the kobold area, kill some kobolds, let's, let's kill like 10 kobolds. There we go, 500 experience, and we're gonna give, uh, let's give like six gold for that. There we go. Nice, perfect. I'm thinking I wanna add some scenery to this too. Seems like there should be a tent here of the guy who's running this shop. This shop doesn't look like a permanent institution, so I'm gonna put that there. Oh yeah, we got a little, got a little wagon. That'll be cool. Ooh, this is a bigger wagon. Maybe we should have this bigger wagon. Yeah, let's do the bigger wagon. There we go, we got bigger wagon. There's not really a person here, which is awkward, but we can always add an NPC. We can just add a guard, and let's put like a ranger guy here. That'd be a cool little thing there. Plus he can help protect it. Okay, and then I think, uh, kind of buildings. That's, that's not the tower we want. What do we got here? We got, uh, that's an interesting tower. That's like a little lighthouse. Ooh, here we go. This is like a scout's tower, temporary scout tower. We're going to put that there. This guy. Yeah. Now we're talking. We're going to put the guard. Can I put him in the tower? Is that a thing? Can I put a ranger in here? Nope, can't do it. Okay. We'll just put the a ranger here. Let's put two rangers. And they're just gonna, you know, if, if players get overwhelmed and they run away and the kobolds are chasing them, they can come to these guards and these guards will be like, oh, hey, you know, we'll just kill these kobolds for you. They're just keeping a scouting party there because they know the kobolds are present. Okay, so Commander Stritus, he has three quests now, total of 1,500 experience plus 600, so we're at 2,100. Max and Knighty has 750. That's 2850. We are about well, we're we're more than halfway to level one after doing all of that. Alright. I think it'd be cool to have a hidden little side quest somewhere. Let's go. Let's add a couple more trees. And then way back here. Under this tree, we will add a little secret guy. We'll add this little, like, tent. Got a little chair, we'll give him a little chair in there. And then, uh, maybe the, uh, the, yeah, the little alchemy table. Oh, that's not what we want. Can't, can't see what I'm doing. Alchemy table. 
I had the little cart that he used to get here. Our NPC is going to be a quest giver, but let's see. It's going to be another wizard. And this is like, this has got to be a guy with a, ooh, ooh, Adria, Adria, Adria. This is just going to be Al Gore. Not Al Gore, but Al Gore. You know what I meant. Al Gore's going to want you to get some bear pelts. So we're going to create a bear region. Just along where the spiders are there. Let's make these pretty thin. Minimal. Okay. I don't know what bears are like. Bears do three DPS. That's a, that's a lot. Ten health. Yeah, let's just make the bears hard. Let's make the bears really hard. Make sure we change the icons because the game hates icons. Swipe is one DPS. Let's apply. That's fine. Maul. We'll add a different uh, icon. Yeah, let's go a lot of damage, but it's going to take like five rage. That sounds good. How much rage does the bear have? You got 20 rage. All right. 20 rage. We're going to really nerf the bear a bit so that people have a chance at least 10. So you can only really do the maul twice. And two second cooldown. Instant cast. Yeah, that's fine. Apply that. Okay, bears are still going to be a pain in the butt. 1.3? 1, 1. No, that's, that's not strong enough. Let's go 0.5 cast, one second cooldown. That's going to still keep DPS. 1.3 still, what the heck? Alright, well, it's still going to do a lot of damage. 3 damage is a lot for, like, say, if you're playing as a wizard who has 8 health. Okay, so not Massacre the Spiders. You're going to tell people to go get you bear pelts. Actually, not bear pelts. We're going to say bear hearts. Yeah, because this guy's like an evil wizard and he wants weird things uh, for, uh, you know, what he's doing. Kind of evil things. Okay, and he's going to pay you. going to pay you pretty well for it. Then, the reason he's over here is because he's close to the wizard tower. Now, this is not his tower. This is Maxonides' tower. But he's going to say, steal a spell book. Steal spell book. Book. And this is going to be worth a lot of money, but not a lot of experience. It is kind of an evil thing to do. People have to kind of ask themselves if they want to commit to, uh, you know, that kind of playstyle. Little RPG element here. So he now provides 750 experience. We're now at like close to, what, 3,500 or so? If they come over here and do that. They're also still going to get experience for killing enemies. Remember, it's 10 plus 15, so there's 35 experience, sorry, 25 experience uh, for every base creature. So if they kill 10 spiders, uh, that's going to be worth 250 experience. They have to kill kobolds, that's experience. We're pretty close to level 1. So to make sure that we top people off, make sure they hit level 1 at the point we want them to hit level 1, we're going to create a, a main quest kind of checkpoint. And that's going to take people to a point where like, okay, this is where the main quest takes you. And then boom, they're going to give you a big experience dump to ensure that we get the next level and players are able to start upgrading themselves. All right, so we're going to set a monster zone and I'm going to go uh, skeletons and we're going to make this on the road, which is... Not exactly suggested most of the time. Let's, uh, let's go like this. And then we're gonna create a safe spot. Like so. Then create, oops, more dangerous zone around. All right. Let's go ahead and put a couple of guards in here so that players are safe. Put a paladin, a couple of rangers, there we go. So this location is going to be, uh, you know, they don't have to worry about anything. And then on the back side, we'll put a quest giver. This is going to be, we'll put another ranger. Okay, we'll get to him later. And actually what I'll do, I don't want players to get come through here and get hurt. We're going to get rid of, I got rid of, 
Got rid of my skeletons. They will put it back. But what I want to change about it is I'm going to have it redirect away from uh, our skeleton zone. I'm going to place some building stuff and put some defenses up. We're going to place some guards. Put some fighter guards. And a couple of rangers because they are pretty dang strong. Okay, and then the road is going to kind of cut through the camp. I we'll had a couple of tents over here. Want we'll some uh, more flare here with uh, some guards. Another ranger. I'm gonna add another paladin commander. Right there is perfect. Gonna give him a table as well. Kind of set it up the same way as we did that other tent. Let's go ahead and make this kind of like a mess hall. Not exactly the best chairs, like lounge chairs. They're lounging while they eat. This guy needs a chair in here, too. I don't know what to add in this one. We'll make this kind of like the storage area, maybe. Bada bing, bada boom. In pass, we can go back into walls, actually. There is kind of a spike wall. No, I don't want that. We'll put, uh, we'll say they kind of put up some temporary posts here. Defensive structures. Because this problem has been going on for quite some time. All right, there we go. That's good. Go ahead and add a, like a rock or something here occasionally. Rocks. And we'll add like uh, building ruins. Always fun. Yeah, now we're talking. Just scatter these around. Ooh, some pillars. There we go. Yeah, the skeletons are like in a destroyed relic of a city. Kind of line them up so they look like there used to be square foundations. Kind of put a few more of these. We go. Alright, did I did I create the quest giver here? No, oh, he's just a guard. But I want a quest giver here. I do want a quest giver here. Let's get rid of this guy. We'll make him Paladin Quest Giver. There we go. I feel like I want more scenery, so I'm going to add some trees along the pathway here. That's why the path curves. That's a good reason why the path curves. There's trees and stuff. We're really running low on uh, ca oh, we're not running low on cash actually, not too bad. Okay, now Commander Stritus, I have a couple more quests you can give. You are gonna send people all the way over here to this guy. Go to esteemed Silith. That's a weird name. Uh, no gold. Let's change this. No gold. You're going to report to him, you're going to get another 150 experience. There we go. Now, this guy. This. This is General... General Morith. He is a high-level dude. Okay, he wants you to go and investigate the tower. Okay. Investigate the spire. And we'll give maybe one gold. 250 experience. Perfect. And then he also 
I want you to speak to this other quest giver. Yes, so speak to him. And this is just healthy investigation. No gold. And just an easy 250 experience. No, so this guy is Captain Nathan. Captain Nathan the Ranger. He's going to ask you to basically, you know, take care of some of these skeletons because there's a problem with all the skeletons. And this is just going to be uh, defend the rangers while they do their investigation. Let's, let's say 10. Good amount of experience right there. It'll be 250 experience because you get some for killing the monsters anyways. Five gold. And then the last one here is going to be this is going to be our big dump so you have to return to no no you should return to the general he's the highest ranking guy return to the general and you're going to inform the general and this is going to be what guarantees our experience dump to get to guaranteed level two so a thousand experience ten gold okay you're going to do that and then you've hit level two now we'll add some other stuff in here later as we keep going but we want to make sure we get our game released we want players in the game we want to start making money as a game developer because that's essentially what the game is to begin with and we want to see how kind of how the game balance starts to uh starts to work out okay so what we're gonna do we can actually upgrade our game again already really okay we'll delay that we'll wait for a second we want to get players in first. So I'm going to hit play and things are going to start updating. What we need to make sure is our grid actually kind of comes back. No, the network comes back online and everything gets activated the way it should. And then we'll also get a little game release video uh, as things start to kick up. So we hit play. And our game master let start going around everywhere. And it looks like, yep, so our network has improved. Um, things should start. Yep, things are getting activated again. Yep, connections are being made. That thing's activated. Everything's starting to come together. Is this thing gonna activate? One, there it goes, perfect. Now, where's our game master? Where's our little, where's that little cursor? Oh, there it is. There he goes. I don't know where he's headed. Flying over toward the kobolds. Oh, he's checking on the kobolds. He's going this way. Oh, he might be headed towards our game start point. Is he going to... No, no, no. Where's he going? Nope. Maybe he's just dealing with bugs. I don't know. Our game should release. Oh, there it goes. Here it is. It's happening. Oh, yes. Look at this cinematic. We're opening town. Lighthouse Vector Storm presents. Oh, this is so cool. Yes. Yes. Cool. Well, starting town. Art designers. Wouldn't be here without them. Sound and music. MMORPG Tycoon 2. Shatterstone. Here we go. First episode in the series. And here is our first player character entering the game. Toonhole. Toonhole's gonna go. Oh, here he goes. Starting his first quest. Now we can click on him. Oh, we got, oh my gosh, we got tons of players. No, I didn't check my price on everything. Hold on. Okay, sales. Our game is $40 and it's a $10 subscription. That's fine. That's a good starting spot, I think. Okay, carry on. Where is yeah, Toonhole? Let's favor him. He's our first player ever. That's pretty cool. Toonhole. Welcome, Toonhole. Alright, so you'll see right away. Okay, he'll just 
Phase through the tree, that's cool. So he's going on his first quest. He logged in, he picked up a quest. Got some stats, you can see how good the, the player is in terms of happiness and addiction to our game. We want them to be nice and addicted, so they keep giving us money. So he's on that quest that was to rule out the dead, so he's gonna go check out the graveyard. He's gonna go investigate. Look at him investigating, investigating so hard. Yes, look at all these players, they're on their first quest. Oh, this is so exciting. Go, Toonhole. Go. Go head back to the wizard. Oh, Toonhole got for his first experience. That's so great. And we can see he's got, uh, he's got 500 experience. He's already on his way to level, level two. Okay, well, we're gonna go ahead and, uh, in the episode here, I think this is a good spot to end it. We've got our game activated. We've got our first players interacting with our quests. We're going to have some fun watching them as they go and progress uh, in later episodes. But for the time being, we've got our level one starting here. Ooh, that is so cool looking. Oh my gosh. This game has a really, really, you know, and a simple elegance to it. A really simple elegance. Okay, I'll carry on. Anyways, I'm Kyle. This has been that one playthrough of MMORPG Tycoon 2. Welcome to the land of Brightwood, our first little level 1 area. Uh, we will see you next time, and we'll pick up adding some more stuff. Hopefully, we'll be able to follow some characters around and see, uh, see how they progress, see how they level, see how the game economy and everything balance-wise works out. Have a good rest of your day, everybody.